getting our um, circuit board built. So what we're going to need is um, obviously some Vero board and we're also going to need um, some sockets. Now these are kind of optional. Um, if you're really confident that the pack that you've programmed is um, you know, going to work and you're never ever going to want to change it then you can fit it without one of these but personally I'd recommend them because you just never know. Um, you're also going to need some 100 nanofarad capacitors um, and you're also going to need some resistors for your uh, LEDs. Now um, I've chosen 220 ohm resistors for these but as I've said in the past depending on what LEDs you're going to use is going to depend on what uh, what resistors you really need. Um, you're going to be feeding them off 5 volts so again use the calculators or whatever you like but in my case yeah 220 ohm is a, is a good value. So I'll get you zoomed in and um, we'll get started. Alright so with um, our Vero board I've just as you can see I've just cut it down basically to size. Um, you need basically roughly 8x8. Eight eight. Um, there's uh, some pretty good guides on the net actually which will give you a nice little diagram and as I sort of said earlier I'm <sighs> Most of the mods are like um, I do, I sort of don't use a lot of parts or they're pretty straightforward so I expect you guys can do them at home but with this particular one because you need to be programming ICs I'm not sure how many of you are actually going to go through it so I'm not going to you know, get overly carried away with detail on that but um, what I've done is I've gone through and um, cut out the tracks um, that I don't want so, so what we need to do now is we're just going to get our, um, our socket fitted and um, Pretty much, I'm just going to flip the board over and it's just going to sit in, just make sure that's in the right place, yep, it's just going to sit in there and um, the orientation is quite important. Um, with the sockets you'll see that up the top there's a sort of wee divot in there and that indicates um, where pin 1 is going to be, so make sure that's facing the right way. So um, looking at the back of our board, um, you can see how I've cut a track here. Um, and it basically it goes up through seven tracks because the IC we're using is a 14 pin so it's seven pins per side so we go up seven tracks and just bore all that out so the sides of the pins don't short out and um, pin one is going to be up the top here where we haven't uh, facing this last track that hasn't been cut. Right so we'll just get that soldered together and um, then we can put the rest of it together. Alright so it's usually just a little bit fiddly to begin with, so um, once we get the first little bit attached, we'll be away. Okay, just going to hold our socket in place, that's good. Right, so now just race along and get the rest of them soldered up. Okay, so now our uh, socket's attached, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly race along with my multimeter and just make sure that again none of this is shorting out, um, because you really want to be sure you don't want to damage your satin or this um, chip that we're putting together, so um, I'll just check that and then we'll carry on. Okay, so uh, just use my multimeter um, and checking for continuity, everything checked out fine, so um, we're good to carry on. And what I've got here is just a piece of uh, metal, it's actually a leg off a, uh, it's off a resistor, it's just an off cut, and I've just bent that into a little U shape, and what I'm going to do is just with um, pin one up the top there, I'm actually going to put it just down the bottom, and um, fingers in the way there so you can't quite see, oh, the old multimeter going berserk, right, so as you can see I've just put a little link in there, um, and what this is for is this is actually going to carry um, our ground is going to come in on this line here and it's going to just link our ground over so it can go into our IC and just going to give these a little bit of a bend out just so they stay in place okay and now we'll just dob some solder onto that So that's our link in place um, and just cut off the, uh, the excess. There we go, it's looking good. 
Right, so and now we'll just need to um, go and add in our capacitor. capacitor. Oh. It's um, one of these little wee ceramic type. Sorry, not getting a lot of focus there. There we are. Okay, so um, what we're going to do here is we're just going to link that from the same line that our ground is on and it's going to link over to where, uh, the same line that our power is on. So basically there's a 100 nanofarad capacitor. Got. Okay, so I've just gone and um, soldered on our 100 nanofarad capacitor. Okay, so resistors, again, use whatever value you see fit, but for me 220 microfarad is fine. And what I'm going to do with these is I'm just going to bend one leg over. So make like a giant sort of a U shape out of it, just past that. So I'll put one resistor in like that. I'll just quickly bend up the other one. And that's going to slot into the ones beside it. Right, so we'll just get those legs soldered up. Because the traps you solder onto are quite close together, it's very easy to just let a bit of solder wander over, and that's why I've sort of between each stage I pretty much just stop and again run my um, multimeter or my continuity meter just over and just make sure nothing's shorting out because these, although these are actually they're not the smallest thing you'll work on, um, they can get a little bit uh, tricky to look at. So it pays just to be sure. Righto, so that's all our uh, hardware installed. Um, we just need to plug in our um, pick chip of course and um, add on our wiring so we'll get on to getting that done. Okay so um, what I'm going to do now is um, we've got our circuit board almost ready so it's time to get our IC ready. So this is a PIC programmer. Um, I've got an IC sitting in there already and um, these are this particular one's USB driven and quite a cheap little kit um, but the thing is though is, I mean a lot of you guys at home like you're probably just gonna do the one set and so I don't know how easy it's going to be for you to justify buying all this gear just to do the one machine but hey look um, if you need some help with it feel free to get in touch with me but okay so what we're going to do now is we're just going to you can see here it's got a little picture of where our um, pick's supposed to be now like everybody uses different software so <laughs> um, for me I just use what came with the actual um, with the actual come with the programmer. Um, so, like I say, a lot of this isn't going to apply to you guys, but anyway, I just load in our hex code. You can see our little lights on there. Okay, so here's our hex code, all ready to go. And um, pretty much all we need to do is hit the program button, and you'll see. That this little light's going to come on. There we go. And it's now programming the chip. And um, once it's finished, it comes up, programming complete, and that's it. And what we can do, if we like, is we can go and hit on uh, what is it? Read. And that goes and has. Oh, I'll just do that again. It quickly reads the ROM and you can see it's read back everything we've put in there. So that sort of gives us a bit of uh, bit of proof that it's working. And um, that's it, our PICS programmed and ready to go. So all we've got to do now is plug it into our little mod chip board and you'll be done. Okay, so now uh, it's time to get some wiring attached. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add a red and black wire. I mean, you can use whatever colour coding you like, but you know, I'd like to try and keep it sort of roughly the right colours so um, I can remember what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So um, we need to add a red and black wire which is um, our 5 volt feed and our ground wire. So I'm just going to pop those 
just in there. So again, ground's going to run down the far side and our 5 volts there. So we just flip that over. And I'm just going to bend those wires over just a little bit so they stay there for me. Okay. Let's quickly get some solder onto that. Right. So now we've got our uh, red and black attached. Um, next wires we need to add is for our LED. So as you can see I've gone and got some green wire, um, some black wire and some red wire. So for our red and green and uh, our ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach the ground for the LED. Just got a nice little gap there. So I'm just going to poke that in. And I'll just give that a bit of a over. Okay, so uh, just going to get our ground wire quickly soldered on. Right, so that's the ground for our LEDs done. You can see there, just in the same line. And now we just need to add our uh, red and our green power feed for it and you can see they're going to go in the same line as the uh, as a resistor so our red wire is going to go down to here and our green wire sorry guys this is a bit awkward there we go our green wire is going to go on the over there on the outside so what that's doing is basically um, if we look at our board um, we can see that Pin 5 and 6 are what are going to feed the um, power to the LEDs and that's why we've got this, um, this hole here. So basically the 5 volts comes out of pin 5 and pin 6, then it passes through the resistor and then carries on up to the, um, well, to the leads that lead off the LED. Okay, so uh, the next lot of wires we're going to attach is for our, our tap on for our reset button um, and also our 50 and 60 hertz switch and you'll see that I kind of group everything together in lots of three for these so it's easy for me to follow as to where everything's going to go. So pretty much um, my white wire is going to go in next to where the link is as you can see there. That's for one side of the reset button. Uh, the next wire into it is for the 50 and 60 hertz switch and our last one um, is for the other side of the, uh, the reset button. Okay, last three wires. Now, um, these last three, these are going to be for our actual region switches. So we're going to be tapping into jumper 6, jumper 10, and jumper 12. And um, I'll talk about those more when we get to it. But um, for the time being, basically, we just got to fill in the last three holes there. Righto, so. There is our board with all the connections on it and uh, that is ready to be fitted into a machine. But there is of course one last thing we need to do and that's we need to add our uh, pick chip to it. Okay, so we're just going to just push that down into our socket. And there we go, that is one switchless region chip ready to go. So next up, uh, we've got to start fitting this into the console.